So this week we are starting our study on getting through and surviving the storms of life and how appropriate that is with everything that's going on in the world. So I decided this week to go ahead and focus on Psalm 107, 27 through 31, which is about God calming the storm to a whisper and the waves of the seas being hushed by his breath. And I think that that is just such a gorgeous, amazing picture of the power of our God. And so it turns out that studying the storms during the month of April when I planned back in January was all completely, I'm sure, God's divine plan. So that's what we're doing this month. So I decided to do this page on Psalm 107 and currently I'm just prepping my page. I've used gesso and then over my gesso I'm going over it with a liquid um, matte gel medium just to kind of take some of the roughness of the gesso off of it. Um, my gesso tends to feel gritty and sandy and so I like to put that over it so it's not quite as gritty feeling. So then once I did that, I had I went on my iPad and I drew out a image that I wanted to use on the page. <clears throat> and I got it exactly the way I wanted it and I printed it out on my printer and pulled out some graphite paper so that I could do a tracing of the photo that I want or the drawing that I want to go on my page. So I cut that out and put it on the graphite paper and cut that the size that it needed to be and I used some washi tape because it's not super sticky so I can pull it up without tearing the page. So I used some washi tape and I covered my verse because I did not want to accidentally mess up and color over or draw over the verses. So I went ahead and taped that down so that it wouldn't move so that I could trace it very easily. I've gone through this tracing process in my other videos as well, but <clears throat> it is nonetheless a process of just simply putting your image down on the paper, tracing over it with a pencil, and then it comes out onto the page from the graphite paper that's underneath it. So it's pretty simple. Don't let anybody ever tell you that there is something wrong with tracing. I am not an art Nazi and I do not believe that tracing is not art. I believe that if you trace it, it's just as much art as if you drew it from scratch, which, you know, many of us are not these huge, great artists. So tracing thing images onto our Bibles is just fine. So then I went in and I started drawing in the details. <clears throat> I didn't trace the details. I just um, just decided I could draw those in. Most they were mostly just lines and stuff. So I did. I went ahead and filled in all of the different details on the boat and on the waves and things like that. So once I got that done, I took my black Sharpie and went ahead and traced over the entire image so, it, so that it would show up the way that I needed it to. And then I took my Sharpie and I drew the words in the center of the image. And I did use my pit pen later on. I realized my Sharpie was a little thin and it was just taking too long to get it done. And so I took my brush pit pen um, by Faber-Castell and I used that to actually draw the words out and it was it went a little bit quicker once I started using that pen and I hand drew this from just looking at the image but if you don't want to do that you can always trace the words as well and that's not a big deal um, feel free to just you know trace your lettering if you've got some lettering that you want to do so there's no need to just hand draw it I just happened to it was just easier and quicker for me to hand draw it. And then I just wrote, God is the calm at the bottom in my own handwriting. So don't be afraid to use your own handwriting because that's important, especially if this is a legacy Bible that you're leaving for someone else. They're going to want your handwriting, so be sure you use that. And then my Sharpie was not permanent, so I went ahead and went over it again with that liquid gel medium. But you want to make sure you only do it with one stroke of the brush from edge to edge. You don't want to rub back and forth because it's not waterproof so it's going to smear so just one stroke from from right to left or left to right 
each time so that it doesn't smear it. Then I took my Ink Tints watercolor pencils and I started just giving um, some color to the sails. And I remember these are really, really bright. And so they're, they're pigmented really well. So I did put a little bit too much color. So I ended up having to use my rag to lift off the color. As you add water, remember the more water you add, the less color there's going to be. So I just ended up adding quite a bit of water to the center of the sails and then dabbing that with my washcloth and it picked up a lot of that color so it didn't end up being too dark. So I did the edges a little darker than the center and I wanted it to kind of look like it was kind of puffed out. So um, I did that with by lifting some of that color with my, with my um, washcloth. Sorry my camera did cut out so I didn't get the rest of this. Um, but it was the same technique throughout the whole process of just lifting color and adding water and coloring with my colored pencils. And then in the end, I came out with what you're going to see in just a second. So sorry about that, but it did cut out. But anyway, I did want to show you how I did the blue around it. So I went ahead and sprayed with water and I just kind of added color and then just let it dry. So remember when you spray water onto a paper and then add watercolors to it, it's the color is only gonna go where the page is wet. So you can spray it and control where the color goes based on the wet and dryness of the page. So don't be afraid to just spray your page and add. And remember those DeWitt colors, they dry, those ink tint markers that I use, they dry permanent once they're dry. So I can put water on top of them and the color underneath them is not going to move, which is really cool. I love that about these pencils. So I went ahead and added some white over the white caps so that they would look like they were kind of crashing against the boat as if in a storm. So I used my um, white paint pen to do that and then I added some highlights to the words as well so that those would kind of pop a little bit better. And then I took a really wet brush and I just added some blue splatters. The great thing about watercolors, it's very healing. You can, you can lift it up really easy. I accidentally smeared it there, so I just added some extra water to it. And then I just took my nap, my towel and wiped it up and then I just redid that section. So they're very forgiving. So if you wanna learn really about, about painting and doing some of this stuff, watercolors is the way to go because you can lift it off as, as long as it's not. Um, you, the ink tense pencils that dry permanent. You can always lift it off. And then of course I dated my page. I dated it several times. It didn't want a stamp for me, so I just kept dating it until it did, but it turned out just fine. I don't mind that, having several dates on there that are, you know, in different places. So, and then I just highlighted the scripture so that I could remember the scripture that I did the painting for. And this is gonna help me to focus this month on really surviving the storms of life and knowing that they are working out for my good. So I hope this inspired you. I hope that you guys will try this at home and I want you guys to have a wonderful week. Stay safe and stay healthy and we'll see you next week.